Hello YouTube and welcome back. This is video number 15 in my series on utilizing Blender as a video editor. Today we're going to be a little bit more adventurous and we're going to actually deal with the 3D part of the Blender program. Now I know that sounds kind of scary because we've never worked in 3D before this point. In all 14 videos up to this point we've only needed to use the sequencer and drag and drop stuff on the sequencer and cut it up and output it. But there is an advantage to using a 3D program as your video editor, and that is that you can actually put video in a three-dimensional grid, and you can maneuver a camera around the video in very interesting ways. So let's just get right to that, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go up to here, this drop down, and we're going to switch to the default view. And before we go any further, I must stress that it's going to be very important that you have both a wheel mouse and a number pad when you're dealing with the 3D part of this program, because there's a lot of shortcuts that are connected to the wheel mouse and to the number pad. But the number pad specifically will switch the, your perspective. So you can switch front, back, top, bottom just by hitting the numbers on the number pad. And the wheel mouse is used for grabbing and rotating things and for zooming in and out. So please do go and pick up a wheel mouse and a number pad if you don't have access to either of those things. They're going to be really, really helpful. So now what we need to do is we have this default box here. We're going to right click on that and we're going to delete it. So we don't need it. Now you need to go up to file because we need to be able to import a video as a plane. So we're going to go to file and we're going to go to user preferences and we're going to type in the word plane, P-L-A-N-E. And you're going to see an option here that says import export, import images as planes. Make sure that the check mark is on. So put the check mark there if it's not there and then close this. Now we'll be able to actually import a video as a three-dimensional plane object. So what I want to do now is we're going to hit the space bar. We're going to click here first. Let's click on where these two lines intersect, the green and red line. This is where it's going to place the object as we lay it, wherever this crosshair is located. So let's put it in the middle, or as close as you can get. Now hit the space bar, and we're going to type in the word plane. And we're going to say import images as planes. Now we're going to actually import a video, but it doesn't matter. It, it can be a video or an image. So import images as planes, click that. And we're going to select some random video. <laughs> there we go. Now it's not showing the actual texture of the video here. And we can turn that on by actually going down to this little drop down and we're clicking it and, and clicking texture. There we go. Now you'll see there's a video on there. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to our number pad and we want to switch to a top down view by clicking the number seven. There we go. And we want to use our wheel on our wheel mouse and we're going to zoom up. There we go. We got our video. Now we are going to go over to the right side. There's these little tabs up here. Right now we're in the render tab. Let me pull this out a little bit so we can see it. We're we're viewing the render tab, which shows what the actual resolution of the file and the frame rate and everything is going to be when we render it. Let's actually switch to the material tab. It's this little round sphere over here. It says material. We want to hi highlight over it. And you can see it's already showing the video over a sphere. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn on this option called shadeless. What this does is it says ignore the actual light source that has been configured. There's a light source that is shining down. and If we change the angle of it, it will change the lighting. We want this to have perfect lighting, so the only way we can do that is if we actually turn it to a shadeless mode. So we're going to do that, and you saw it actually the light became more even. So that's done. Now what we need to do is we need to go over to the next tab over. It's called the texture tab. And we're going to go down here, and we're going to click match movie length. And that will actually set the frames for the video that is in on this plane right here. And now you should be able to go down to this timeline down here and drag it. And you can see the video is, is there in three dimensions. OK, set it there. Now, why do I want to do this? What's the point? I could have just done this exact same thing using the standard video editor. Well, the cool thing is that I can actually move this object and I can do things in three dimensions that you just can't do very easily with the regular video editor. But what I'm going to need to be able to do that first is I'm going to need a camera. 
So we need to set the the view for the camera. So what we're going to do is we're going to click our space bar. We're going to click on the actual um, on this this window, and we're going to click our space bar, and we're going to type in the word camera. And the first option is align camera to alt to control alt number zero. Okay, click that, and now we're looking through our camera. It actually uh, it actually set our view as the view of the camera. So it put the camera right where we are at right now. And we're, we're actually looking from inside the camera. And the area that is actually clear is the camera, what the camera will render when we output this, this uh, to a video file. And uh, the, out, the other part, the grayed out area, you won't be able to see. So now, well, what's the point? So I, I have a video here and I can set the camera on it. Well, the cool thing is that I can move this camera around the picture. I can zoom into parts. I can uh, I can move around the picture. Now imagine if this was actually a photograph. I can actually do a Ken Burns style video movement where I can actually look, z zoom uh, on one part of the image and move along to a different part and tell a story as I'm going from from uh, component of the picture to component of the picture. Uh, you can do the same thing with video. I can use this to do all kinds of zooms and stuff like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the right mouse click on the camera line. And you, start, you see that we selected it because it turned yellow. Once it's yellow, I can hit my G button to grab it and I can move it around. So I'm moving the camera around to the position I want and placing it with my left mouse button. And I can right click on it again. Okay, now yellow always means that that's what's selected. I right click on it or right mouse click on it again and hit my G button and I can push my mouse wheel button and holding it down I can zoom in by just pushing forward or pulling back and then letting go with uh, you don't let go you keep holding the mouse wheel button and click your left button and it drops it so now the video will actually render just this camera view so now do I w I don't want to just have it stuck on my that part of my face for the whole video, I want to be able to move it around the actual video to different locations at different uh, times. So we need to use something called keyframes and we need to set keyframes so that the camera will move around the actual video as the video is playing. How do we do that? Well, we select our camera by highlighting over until it becomes yellow and we actually go down to this little timeline down here. See that? And we put it at frame one. You can type it in here if you like. Hit enter. And we want to start there. So I want the camera to be focused on my, that part of my face. I don't know why, but we're just going to do it that way. And I, I hover over this, or the, my mouse over here, and I hit the I button. And what that does is that gives me the option to tell it how I want the keyframe uh, to be used. I want to actually do a location rotation scale. So this is a pretty good default. We're going to click that with our left mouse button. And what it did is this turned yellow. And if you pull this away, you can see it left a little yellow keyframe marker there. So that's going to that's gonna tell the camera that it wants to be at that frame. It wants to be zoomed there at that exact frame one position. So now I want to go and grab my timeline and I want to go to a different point. I'm going to go to 80 and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to select my uh, camera, make sure that it's yellow with your right mouse button and hit the G button and then move it to a different position. There we go. And then I'm going to, uh, I'm still hovering over, I'm hit my I button and lo location rotation scale. And now you'll see this turned yellow over here. That means that it's it's over a keyframe. And you can you can see there's a keyframe marker there, and there's a keyframe marker here. Now you'll see when I go back. Look at that. See how the camera moves. You can set as many of these things as you want. And I, right now I'm just moving the camera around. You can also select the actual video plane itself, and you can set keyframes for that. So I can say, you know what, I want this, <laughs> I want this actual video plane to move around uh, on its own. So I can go to key, I can go to frame one. You can see it's playing. Uh, it's playing the video and moving the camera as it moves. This. I can go to frame one after selecting the uh, the video plane, and I can actually set a keyframe on that if I like. 
I can actually say, uh, let's hit the, let's hit the, let's actually first select it, and then we're going to rotate it. So I, I have it selected as yellow around it, and I can hit my R button, which means rotate. Now I can hit X, Y, or Z, and it will constrain it to moving only in those directions, on those axes. So if I hit X, it will now, when I move it, it will move it on the X axis. If I hit escape, it will return it. If I hit R and then I hit Y, it will move it on the Y axis. Hit escape and return it to default. And R and then Z, and it moves it on the Z axis. So I want this to spin. Let's do that. So I'm going to set frame run to here. And by, I drop that with my left mouse button. And I'm going to hit my, I'm going to hover over here. I'm going to hit my I. So I'm, I'm, I have, make sure that your video plane is selected. You can see the yellow around it. And hit the I button. And location, rotation, scale. There we go. And that dropped a keyframe saying, I want it to be, I want the actual plane to be in that position, that, that rotation, that location at, at frame one. So you can see there's a yellow line there. And I'm going to go, and it's still, the camera's still moving around based on our previous settings. Now I can go to frame 100, and I can say, but now I want to, I want it to rotate in a different way. I want it to actually, I'm going to hit R, and I'm going to hit my X, and I want it to go that way. So I'm, there we go. And I'm going to hit my I button, and rota uh, location, rotation, scale. There we go. So now you can see the camera, when I go over this timeline, it will both move the camera keyframing and it will move the image keyframing. Isn't that cool? So imagine all the things that you could do with this. You could make all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of uh, innovative things that you can come up with. You can make you know, an opening where you have three-dimensional videos kind of moving around or flipping. There's really a <laughs> endless things that you can do with this, you know, I mean, now that you can move it in three dimensions. So I guess play around with that. Make sure that uh, when you're done, you go back to the render and you set your settings here and you hit the animate button and it will record what, whatever is inside this camera view. Okay, the one thing that's going to be really important to understand is how to remove keyframes that you've placed because that can be kind of confusing. What you need to first do is select the object the camera or the plane that you want to change the keyframe on. And the, like I said before, the way you know what is selected is by what has a yellow outline around it. So if I, if I actually click with my left mouse button on here, I'm now, I've now selected my camera and you can see the keyframes for the camera. And if I select down here, you can see this outline with yellow and I have the keyframes down here. Now you can actually highlight over the actual keyframe where it's yellow. I know that I'm highlighted over it because I can see this. See how this is actually white, and then when I go over a keyframe, it turns yellow. That means this this designates that this is actually set. This keyframe is set at 100. Now, if I want to delete that, I can just go over down here, and I can actually click this and delete the keyframe, and it will delete the keyframe for whatever object I'm I have selected. So even though I deleted it for this object, if there was also a keyframe on that exact same frame for the camera, it will still be there. Now, if you just want to clear all your keyframes, you can select the object and you can you can go to object and you can go to animation and you can say clear key keyframes and remove an animation. There we go. So now it's it it left the it removed the keyframes for the object that I had selected and it left the keyframes for the ones that I didn't select. So I can actually click over here and I can do the exact same thing. Object, and I can say animation, clear keyframes. So now we're back to having no keyframes, and you can start over again. Or like I said, if you want to individually remove them, you use just this button down here. So now I guess uh, that should pretty much do it for utilizing 3D for your videos, and uh, play around with it.